Welcome back, fellow soldiers, to another edition of Appropriating the Culture. Last week, we were talking about the notion of equity and our culture's seeming obsession with it and discuss whether or not equity is a Christian value. And what we concluded was it depends entirely on what you mean by equity. If what you mean by equity is that we all have to end up in the same place, well, then the Christian answer is no. A different outcomes doesn't mean that we were treated inequitably. God does judge us evenly, but some of us go to heaven, some of us go to hell, and the punishments and rewards of each are not entirely uniform. But thinking of this in deeper terms, does God even value equity? Does he treat us all the same? Does he even love us all the same? Well, certainly not Esau. I mean, forget that guy, am I right? I'm Pastor Shane. I'll be your VIP today as we appropriate some culture. We are not born on equal footing. We're different. Some are born to privilege, some are born to wealth. We have different abilities and different aptitudes. And although God will judge us equitably, we will not all have the same outcomes. Some will be punished, some will be rewarded. And there's indication that the punishment will not be entirely uniform, and so too with the rewards. In Matthew, Jesus describes the kingdom of God this way. Again, it will be like a man going on a journey who called his servants and entrusted his wealth to them. To one he gave five bags of gold, to another two bags, and to another one bag, each according to his ability. Then he went on his journey. So they are entrusted according to their ability. They don't all have the same ability. We're not all the same. We don't start off on equal footing. The Gospel of Luke has the same sort of parable, and it says this. The first one came and said, Sir, your minna has earned ten more. Well done, my good servant, his master replied. Because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of ten cities. The second came and said, Sir, your minna has earned five more. His master answered, You take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, Sir, here is your minna. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth. I was afraid of you because you are a hard man. You take out what you did not put in and reap what you did not sow. His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. You knew, did you, that I am a hard man taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow? Why then didn't you put my money on deposit so that when I came back, I could have collected it with interest? Then he said to those standing by, take his minna away from him and give it to the one who has 10 minas. Sir, they said, he already has 10. He replied, I tell you that to everyone who has, more will be given, but as for the one who has nothing, even what they have will be taken away. They don't have the same ability, they're not entrusted with the same amount, and they don't all receive the same reward. That's not terribly equitable if we mean it in the current cultural sense of starting out on the same footing and getting to the same outcome. However, there is another parable that does seem to capture the modern meaning of equity and it involves workers in a vineyard and a denarius. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire workers for his vineyard. He agreed to pay them a denarius for the day and sent them into his vineyard. About nine in the morning he went out and saw others standing in the marketplace doing nothing. He told them, You also go and work in my vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. He went out again about noon and about three in the afternoon and did the same thing. About five in the afternoon he went out and found still others standing around. He asked them, Why have you been standing here all day long doing nothing? Because no one has hired us, they answered. He said to them, You also go and work in my vineyard. When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Call the workers and pay them their wages, beginning with the last ones hired and going on to the first. The workers who were hired about five in the afternoon came and each received a denarius. So when those came who were hired first, they expected to receive more. But each one of them also received a denarius. When they received it, they began to grumble against the landowner. Those who were hired last worked only one hour, they said, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the work and the heat of the day? But he answered one of them, I am not being unfair to you, friend. Didn't you agree to work for a denarius? Take your pay and go. 
I want to give the one who was hired last the same as I gave you. So in this parable, they all end up in the same place. They all get the same exact reward. Equity. Of course, it's, it's not equal work. So it's not equal pay for equal work, which is a sign of inequity. So really, there's no example of equity in the modern sense of the word appearing in Scripture. God will judge us fairly and evenly without partiality, and we are to do likewise, but that's really about the extent of it. God doesn't make us all the same, it says in Romans. But who are you, a human being, to talk back to God? Shall what is formed say to the one who formed it, Why did you make me like this? Does not the potter have the right to make out of the same lump of clay some pottery for special purposes and some for common use? So some of us are special and some of us are common. That doesn't sound equitable. Also, God doesn't seem to treat us all the same. He chooses the Israelites and gives them special favor. It says in Malachi, I have loved you, says the Lord. But you ask, how have you loved us? Was not Esau Jacob's brother, declares the Lord? Yet I have loved Jacob, but Esau I have hated, and I have turned his hill country into a wasteland and left his inheritance to the desert jackals. Jacob I loved, Esau I hated. That doesn't seem equitable. Jesus also didn't treat everyone in exactly the same way. He had a lot of followers, but the 12 disciples had special access. And even within the 12, Jesus had an inner circle where all the VIP disciples would hang out. I mean, it's cool, whatever. I didn't even want to go to your transfiguration anyway and, and see Moses and Elijah. I'm more of an Elisha fan, really, so doesn't bother me. And speaking of exclusive clubs, our sponsor today is the Appropriating the Culture Fan Club. Feel superior and gain all the perks by becoming a member of the Appropriating the Culture Fan Club. All members are treated to amazing benefits, rewards, and advantages that put even the Illuminati to shame. I wish I could tell you more, but that's privileged information that is only devoted to members of the Appropriating the Culture fan club, which is so exclusive that even I can't get in. Anyway, so it seems that when we look through Scripture that God does not particularly value our modern sense of equity. Even the language of salvation is one of exclusivity. Jesus says in Matthew, Enter through the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the road that leads to destruction, and many enter through it. But small is the gate and narrow the road that leads to life, and only a few find it. And for people, that's bothersome. The doctrine of hell is bothersome. The parable where people didn't get equal pay for equal work is bothersome. But that doesn't make it untrue, and it doesn't make it unfair either. And yet, it does seem to not be in alignment with our sense of fairness. Now, to be sure, there is equality in some sense. We're all made in the image of God, so we all have intrinsic worth. And Scripture says that there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Your race doesn't matter. Your social economic status doesn't matter. Your gender doesn't matter. We are all equal in that way. But there is one distinction that does matter, one way in which we are not all equal, and that is some of us are children of God and some of us aren't. I know sometimes people say that we're all children of God, but the Bible actually says this. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. And Jesus said, You are doing the works of your own father. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me. For I have come here from God. I have not come on my own. God sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desires. 
We are all made in the image of God. We are all creations of God, but we are not all children of God. Only those who have received Christ, those who believe in his name, are children of God. And that changes everything. That changes the outcome. God is equitable in his judgment, but he doesn't regard his children like he does the rest of creation. And if you think that's totally inequitable and completely unfair, well, that's what you do, isn't it? Not all children are your children, and that doesn't mean you mistreat other children or treat them unfairly. But other children are not your children. Your children are special to you, and they ought to be. But the good news is anyone can receive Christ and become a child of God. It doesn't matter whether you were born on first base or third base. doesn't matter your skin color or race. doesn't matter your gender. doesn't matter your IQ or your aptitude. It's level at the foot of the cross. And that's the only equity that actually matters. Well, that's all for today. Join my super duper exclusive club by liking my Facebook page, following me on Twitter or Locals, and be sure to leave your comments, like, share, and review. And I'll see you next week for more Appropriating the Culture. Mm -hmm.